Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. Today's topic is AQL sampling in quality control inspections. We frequently get questions about the AQL and how it relates to our quote indicating the number of man days for an inspection. It really comes down to understanding what the AQL is as these do form some of the basis for determining how much time will be required for an order. Today's presentation is designed to help our customers and you understand the subject of AQLs. In this presentation, we will seek to answer five key questions. Number one, what is an AQL? Number two, how is it used in quality control inspections? Number three, how do you read the AQL table? Number four, how to determine the sample size using the AQL table? And then number five, how to determine the numbers and types of defects allowed in a particular sample? I think we can all agree that the um, expectations of quality and the scope of safety requirements that uh, you must comply with are becoming more complex every day. When your product fails to meet these expectations for market acceptance, the result can be what? A loss of goodwill, um, product returns, a loss of revenue, delayed shipments, wasted materials, and even the potential risk of a product recall. Here are the most important reasons that quality control inspections should be a part of your supply chain planning. Um, to minimize your risks, to save money, to save time, to improve your control over your suppliers, to improve your bargaining power, and to provide some measure of brand protection. Now, the vast majority of inspections done today are what we call pre-shipment inspections, also known to some as a PSI. It is an important step in the quality control process and is the standard method for checking the quality of goods prior to being shipped. This inspection is conducted on finished products that are 100% complete and at least 80% already packaged for shipping. This inspection is done according to the standard acceptable quality levels or the standard AQL specifications for that particular product or in some cases based upon customer requirements. Samples are selected at random from the production lot and inspected for defects. Now, some might ask, why not inspect every piece? Well, that would be nice, but it would also be very costly. Piece by piece inspections are done in some cases, for example, on small rush orders and on very high value products where they have to be certain that every single piece has zero defects. However, in most cases, it's simply not necessary to inspect every piece of a lot before shipping. Since it is more cost effective to perform a check on random samples of a production lot, this has become the default standard that is widely accepted for inspection on most com for most consumer goods. The AQL was born from this need to take the guesswork out of the sample size as it relates to the numbers and types of defects in the sample. Thus, the AQL has become the framework for determining the appropriate sampling size number of items to be checked, and the ratios of defects found in the sample size. So what is the AQL? The AQL standard is defined in ISO 2859-1 as the quality level that is the worst tolerable percentage or ratio of defects that are still acceptable. In other words, it re represents the maximum number and type of defects that can be accepted in the inspected sample. If there are more defects than the AQL allows, the entire batch is failed. Yes, AQL sampling is a practical and effective way to reliably measure the quality of an order of manufactured goods to reduce risk prior to accepting the order for shipment. See, this sort of sampling allows you to make an informed decision to accept or reject an order based on the inspection of a small sample of the overall order. So now let's talk about how AQLs are structured. And first we're going to discuss defects. AQLs can be set for a percentage or number of defects. In practice, the three levels most often used are critical defects, major defects, and minor defects. And this is especially true for inspections of consumer products. 
These defects are defined as follows. First of all, critical defects, generally 0%. In other words, you can have zero critical defects. Critical defects are defined as defects where a user could be harmed from use of the product, the product is not compliant with regulations, or the defect results in product failure. The second level are major defects. Generally, 2.5% are allowed as an acceptable limit. These are defects that typically result in the product being considered unacceptable by the end user. And then the last are the minor defects, and typically 4% of these are allowed. These type of defects are defined as defects that are a failure to meet specifications in ways that most buyers may still accept the product. So now we're going to look at the tables and how these are used. The most common AQL standard for the consumer goods industry was developed by the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, and the American Society for Quality. The AQL table is used as a fundamental tool for preparing a sampling plan for random inspections of uh, products. The AQL table makes it easy for the buyer and manufacturer and quality control provider to come together in agreement on quality inspection standards. And what you're seeing here is table one, which help us to define the sample size code letters. And in this uh, slide, we see table two single sampling plans for normal inspections. In table two, you see the little check mark in the third uh, row down. Um, this means that it is passed, and the X means the number for fail. Uh, if you see the up arrows, you use the first sampling plan above the arrow. If the sample size equals or exceeds a lot or batch size, then you just go ahead and do a 100% inspection or piece by piece inspection. Looking at the down arrows, you use the first sampling plan below that arrow. So you're confused yet? <laughs> well, let's use an actual real-world example to explain how we would read the AQL table. So in this slide, we see a picture of t-shirts, right? So let's imagine we have an order of 780 articles of clothing ready to ship, in this case, t-shirts. Now, how would you calculate the standard AQL required for an inspection of this particular production lot? Well, from table one, you, you should remember there are general inspection levels and special inspection levels. So what's the difference, and how are they used in different situations? Well, in special inspection levels, the S1, S2, and so on, are normally used in relatively small numbers of units in the lot. The results are not likely to differ significantly between units inspected, and often this applies to um, lots of 10 units or less, or where an inspection requires destructive or time-consuming tests. Now, general inspection levels, the G1, G2, and so on, are the most common inspection levels used for larger lots. These levels cover all regular checks and tests that can be conducted relatively quickly with varying results across all items sampled. So what are the general inspection levels? Well, these are generally used in the following way. Uh, G1, products with less strict requirements. G2, this is the most common sampling plan for consumer products under normal conditions. And then G3 are products that have the more strict uh, inspection requirements. So going back to table one then, uh, we would look under general inspection levels and general inspection level two, and then we would cross-reference it with the, uh, with the relevant lot size, um, which in our case was 780, so we'd look at the 501 to 1200, and we cross those up, and what do we come? We come to the code letter J. Now if we look on table two, and we look at the left-hand column, it says sample size code letter, we look down to J, which is the code letter we determined in the last slide. We see the next column to the right, which is the sample size. So now we see what the sample size is. Out of 780 pieces, we need to have 80 pieces inspected. So based on the sample size above, we still have to determine the allowable or maximum number of critical, major, and minor defects to pass the inspection. As mentioned above, uh, typically for this type of product, an AQL 
is 0 for critical defects, 2.5 for major defects, and 4 for minor defects. So going back to the AQL table then, you'll notice again the lever, letter J on the left-hand side in the column. You'll see the sample size, and then you go all the way across. Now, in this case, we talked about we have zero um, critical defects allowed, so that's not coming into play here. But you'll see that the, the uh, two columns go down under 2.5, and you'll see that a maximum of five um, major defects are allowed. So if there are six or more, then the lot would be rejected. And then going to uh, minor defects, um, you go over to the next column, which you'll see at the top says 4.0, and you go down and you cross-reference that same column J, and you'll find out that the maximum allowable minor defects for this particular sampling size is 7. So if there are seven or less minor defects found, then the lot would typically, this, the random sampling, random sample would typically pass inspection, whereas if there are eight or more, then the, uh, it would be too many defects and the uh, production lot would fail. So let's take a look at the results of all this, what we call the AQL summary table. So from our original um, um, group of 780 articles that need to um, go through this uh, random uh, sampling inspection. We can see the maximum number of allowed defects for critical defects is zero, five for major defects, and seven for minor defects. So that's uh, clear in the table that uh, we see here. And this is all part of you know, what we call the inspection plan, the AQL portion of an inspection plan that we would do on a, a standard consumer goods inspection. Of course, the AQL is only one factor in determining mandates when we do a quote for a, um, a product inspection. Because we have to look at the product requirements, the inspection checklist, lot size, sampling size, inspection levels, to determine how many mandates may be required for a job. Keep in mind that a t-shirt, such as shown in this example, has many fewer inspection points on a checklist to verify against when compared to, say, a winter jacket that has a hood and zippers, string, snaps, accessories, etc. So let's just talk for a few minutes about uh, um, how HQTS can help you. For decades now, HQTS has been a leader in the quality assurance industry in Asia. Backed by the industry knowledge and experience of over 1,500 prof professionals in more than 20 countries, HQTS is well suited to be your partner in quality assurance. We provide quality control inspections, factory audits, supplier valuations, consumer product testing, production control and production management, and quality control consulting and training throughout Greater Asia. So what are our qualifications? Well, we see in this slide just a few of them. Uh, key accreditations are um, ISO 17020 and ISO 17025 accreditations uh, by CNAS. Uh, we also are accredited by AQSIQ, which is the China Quality Standards Administration. Um, we're accredited by the Consumer Product Safety Commission in the USA. ISTA, which is the um, Packaging Authority, um, as well as the China Compulsory Certificate. These are just a few of our accreditations. We don't even have room on this slide to put them all, but it gives you an idea of what our background is, what our professionalism, and, and how we're accredited. And we're accredited for, um, you know, against all regulatory standards for chemical, for REACH and ROSE and so on. Um, we're very, very involved with the industry. In fact, uh, one of our senior staff has uh, sat as vice chairman of the AQSIQ Standards Committee for many years now. We sit on the International Federation of Inspection Agencies. We're a part of the American Association of Textile Chemists and Colorists. We're involved with the Tory Industry Association, the American Apparel and then the China Association for Medical Equipment. Of course, these again are just a few, as our involvement in the industry is uh, both long and deep. So we'd like to thank you all for joining us today. We hope this presentation um, has been uh, productive and informative, and it's given you a better understanding of the AQL on random sample inspections. We certainly invite you to contact us with any questions about the AQL or any other way that we can help you with your quality control. Again, thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you soon.